Hello, my name is Sneha Patel, and I'm the CEO of Greenwich Life Sciences, a public biotech company based out of Houston, Texas. We are planning a phase three trial for our lead product, GP2, which treats breast cancer patients that are HER2 new 3 plus positive. Our treatment is administered following surgery, and our objective is to prevent the recurrence of breast cancer. Thank you very much for your interest in our presentation. This slide is our safe harbor. Here is an overview of GP2. GP2 is a 9 amino acid peptide of the HER2 new protein. In our phase three trial, when mixed with GMCSF and injected intradermally, we expect to treat HER2 new 3 plus HLA2 patients, and we will start in the second year following surgery, following Herceptin or Ketsyla treatment. Ketsyla is a Herceptin antibody drug conjugate, also called a Herceptin ADC. So first we have surgery, then we have the first year of Herceptin or Ketsyla treatment, and then we follow it with our GP2 therapy. Our phase three trial is designed to mimic our phase 2B trial where we have very strong efficacy and safety data. We reported our data on December 9th, uh, 2020 at the San Antonio Breast Cancer Conference. There we reported no breast cancer recurrences over five years when patients received their first six GP2 doses, which made them fully immunized with an 11% recurrence rate in the placebo arm. We treated approximately 96 HER2 new 3 plus HLA-2 patients who experienced minimal to no side effects and no serious adverse events. The side effects uh, that they did experience were injection site reactions, which are positive, and they are a sign of a, of a positive immune response. The data is statistically significant. The trial was randomized and multi-centered with 16 sites. It was placebo-controlled with median five-year follow-up, and as I mentioned, we saw no breast cancer recurrences over the full five years and the trial was led by MD Anderson. The FDA has reviewed the protocol in the manufacturing, so the uh, trial is ready to start in 2021 as soon as the last step of the manufacturing is finished. We've completed manufacturing of the active ingredient, and now we need to formulate and fill vials. Important to note is there are many other opportunities to expand the market through supplemental phase two trials. We could treat low to intermediate expressors of the HER2 protein, also known as the one to two plus patients. We can also expand to other HLA types and we can combine our treatment with checkpoint inhibitors. There are also many other cancers that express the HER2 new protein. The HER2 new protein is expressed in 75% of breast cancer patients. In other cancers, the patients are expressed at a lower level, but we can still very easily identify those patients using HER2 new diagnostic technology and then treat those patients in the other cancers by combining with Herceptin or Herceptin ADC. And most importantly, we went public in September 2020. We're listed on NASDAQ and our ticker symbol is GLSI. In December, we completed a follow-on offering where we raised $26.4 million on top of the IPO proceeds. This slide describes our belief that there is still substantial unmet need in breast cancer where 50% of recurring patients do not respond to Herceptin or Cadsila. Whether breast cancer patients are receiving Herceptin in the adjuvant setting or Cadsila in the neoadjuvant setting following surgery, both products are effective in only half of the patients, while the other half of the patients still recur with a poor prognosis. Patients are followed for five years after breast cancer surgery, hoping that their breast cancer will not recur. Herceptin is a monoclonal antibody targeting the HER2 new protein administered following surgery. Cadsila is a Herceptin ADC also administered following surgery. Other Herceptin ADCs are also being developed. In the adjuvant setting, Herceptin reduces the recurrence rate from 25% to 12%. In the neoadjuvant setting, Ketsala reduces the recurrence rate from 22% to 11%. Progetta and Neuralynx are new products in the market that when combined with Herceptin, reduce the recurrence rate from 12% to about 9 to 10%, but they add additional toxicity. In contrast, our product, GP2, addresses the unmet need, and it addresses the 50% of patients who do not respond to Herceptin or Cadsila. We saw 100% reduction of the recurrence rate, or 0% recurrences, over five years with minimal to no side effects and no serious adverse events. If we are successful in this initial indication, we expect to treat about 17,000 new patients per year, saving about 1,000 to 2,000 lives per year. This is a timeline where you can see the 11 doses over three years. 
Prior to the start of treatment, a patient will have undergone surgery, and in that first year following surgery, will have received either Herceptin, Anoprogeta, or Tadsila. You can see the six dark arrows pointing down. Those are the first six injections over the first six months, and they provide sufficient immunity that is very close to the peak immunity. And then we try to sustain that immunity with boosters. So we have five boosters that are spaced at six months apart. That gives us 11 doses over three years. We are planning on an interim analysis with a two or three year median endpoint. This slide summarizes feedback from clinicians. In the chart at the bottom, you can see diagnosis, surgery, and HER2 therapy, and then our treatment of 11 doses over three years. Approximately 95% of metastatic breast cancer occurs following recurrence. And if we are successful in treating patients with our GP2 therapy following surgery by reproducing our phase two trial and our phase three trial, then we may be able to prevent the majority of recurrences in this patient population, and thereby significantly reducing metastatic breast cancer. Clinicians believe that because GP2 is safe and effective, patients will want to take our treatment and then return to a normal life. And doctors who are trying to de-escalate some of these toxic and expensive treatments will favor our method of treatment since we reduce the recurrence rate significantly and very safely. So we will naturally follow products such as Herceptin or Ketsyla or other Herceptin ADC searches in HER2. This is our poster from the San Antonio Breast Cancer Conference, which we published on December 9th. And in the middle box, you can see the red Kaplan-Meier curve, which is our GP2 versus placebo comparison of the two arms of the HER2 new 3 plus positive patients. On the right side is a table which describes the patient populations. I'll go through now the curves and the patient population. So the table shows that we had well-balanced arms. Between GP2 arm and placebo arm, the balance can be seen by comparing the left and right columns in the red. And you can see that we treated high-risk T1 and T2 stage cancer patients, which are the moderate to severe patients which are representative current patients that will be the population of our phase three trial. Thus, this phase two trial was very representative of the patients that we will see in the phase three trial. On the right side, you can see in the blue boxes the HER2 1 to 2 plus patients. These are the low to intermediate expressors of the HER2 protein. In those patients, we did not give them Herceptin, and Herceptin is not approved for those patients. We did not see a response in the GP2 arm. But in subsequent trials, we will probably administer Herceptin or Herceptin ADCs along with GP2 so we gain the benefit of the synergy, and then we may see a response. There are also other products that are being explored in the HER2 1 to 2 plus patient populations, which could be synergistic with GP2. So future phase two trials could explore those kinds of products in combination with ours. This slide is the Kaplan-Meier curve for the HER2 positive patients, where we saw no breast cancer recurrences if the patient completed the first six primary injections. The top curve shows 100% disease-free survival or 0% recurrence rates over five years. This is the data that created the excitement about GP2 at the Breast Cancer Conference on December 9th. The curve below the 0% recurrence rate curve is the placebo arm, where you see 89% disease-free survival or 11% placebo recurrence rate. You can see these little black marks on the curves these are the censoring marks, and they show that the median follow-up for both arms was five years. Here is an example of how GP2 treatment is administered in series with Herceptin. The graph on the right shows the five-year follow-up data published at San Antonio Breast Cancer, and the black arrow touches the pink line on the left graph, which is the Herceptin single therapy data published a long time ago. So we start treatment after one year after surgery, and the point of the slide is to show that we could treat earlier. We could treat right after surgery in parallel with Herceptin treatment or even earlier, as long as we can predict HER2 expression and risk for breast cancer. The reason not to do so for this current planned phase three trial is that our historical data is starting in year two following surgery and not earlier. And our goal is to simply reproduce our phase two trial conservatively. But in future trials, we can treat earlier. This is another poster that was presented at the San Antonio Breast Cancer Conference. And this is the design of our phase three trial, which I will not go in very much detail because it is very similar to our phase two trial. Baylor College of Medicine jointly produced this abstract and poster with us. 
We are very excited to be working with Baylor and Dr. Mamawi, who will be our global principal investigator. This slide shows the HER2 new protein. On the right, you can see that GP2 is an intramembrane peptide from the HER2 new protein. And on the left, you can see that the cancer cell image shows the HER2 new protein has an extracellular intramembrane and intracellular portion. This slide describes the dosing in the GP2 mechanism. GP2 is mixed with GMCSF, also known as leukine, and administered by intradermal injection. We dose once per month for the first six months, followed by five boosters spaced six months apart. So in total, there are 11 doses over three years. So for example, in the case of the coronavirus vaccines, it takes about two injections over the first month, and then you get your protection. And then the question is, are there going to be boosters required to sustain that protection over a longer period of time? We have figured that out for GP2, so we need the first six injections to get the immunity. We sustain it over time with five boosters, and that's over the first three years. It is possible that we can continue to sustain that immunity through five years, which is what our data shows, but even longer by giving additional boosters. The primary mechanism is for GP2, which is the blue rectangle in the bottom figures, to, pre to be presented with an HLA molecule using antigen-presenting cells to T cells. These CD8 cytotoxic T cells, which are the purple, purple cells, are trained to attack cancer cells, which are the red cell, when GP2 is presented on the surface of the cancer cell, which is a natural process. So when the cancer cells present GP2, the T cells are already expanded and distributed throughout the body, and they're ready to remove the cancer. So the cancer comes back following surgery. These T cells are primed to kill those cancer cells. Thus, we prevent the recurrence of breast cancer and prevent the metastatic breast cancer as well. Here's an overview of the history of our trials, where we've treated a total of 138 patients with GP2 in four trials with no serious adverse events. Starting from the bottom up, the first phase one trial was a safety trial with GP2 and GMCSF. The second trial from the bottom up mixed GP2 with another peptide AE37. The third trial from the bottom up is GP2 treated in combination with trastuzumab or Herceptin at the same time. And the first trial listed is our phase two trial, where we just reported our phase two data at San Antonio Breast Cancer Conference for the full five years. This slide describes the phase three trial protocol, where we mimic and try to reproduce the phase two trial. As such, we randomize the GP2 plus GMCSF CSF versus GMCSF arms. We plan to start the trial in 2021, enroll for a year and a half to two years, and we will track median two, three, four, and five year recurrence rates over time. This slide describes our manufacturing, which is straightforward, chemistry-based manufacturing. We will be registered as a biologic with 10 to 12 years data exclusivity in the U.S., and our patent runs through 2032 in the major markets, and we are currently prosecuting IP in emerging markets. Here is an overview of the various subpopulations that we will be pursuing in the Phase three trial. These are the four main factors that drive market size. HER2 new expression, node positive and high risk node negative, hormone receptor positive and negative, and HLA type. This is an estimate of the potential market. One in eight women in the US will develop breast cancer. The GP2 potential is best compared to that of Herceptin. Herceptin US revenue is approximately two to three billion per year in the adjuvant neoadjuvant setting, where they treat about 12% of the market. And in our initial indication, we'll treat half of those patients or 6% of the market. If we were to expand to HER2 new 1 to 2 plus patients and to also treat additional HLA types, we could expand to 30% of the market relative to Herceptin's 12%, which would be 2.4 times larger than our first indication. Here are the various marketed products that we discussed that still leave substantial unmet need. Herceptin reduces the recurrence rate from 25% to 12% and Kitsila reduces recurrences from 22% to 11%. Progetta reduces that 12% recurrence rate by about 20% to 9 to 12% and adds additional side effects. Neuralinx also reduces that 12% recurrence rate by about 
to 9 to 10 percent and adds severe diarrhea as a side effect. TP2 by comparison reduces the recurrence rate to 0 percent in median five years follow-up with minimal to no side effects and no serious adverse events. Our phase 2b trial was with Herceptin only and these other products, Cadsila, Progetta, or Neuralynx, were not approved then, but most importantly were not required to reduce the recurrence rate to 0 percent. Thus, the opportunity for de-escalation, which I described at an earlier slide. Here's an overview of HER2 new expression in various cancers. In the red boxes are cancer types where there is HER2 new expression at the 3 plus level, which could be evaluated in a phase 2 basket trial where we use HER2 diagnostic technology to identify these patients. And we would combine Herceptin or Herceptin ADCs with GP2 in these other cancers. This slide shows our trading comps, and there are many other trading comps that could be comparable to GP2 other than those listed here. And of note are the transaction comps. These are either licensing or M&A deals, where, for example, Gilead and Merck have invested or partnered multi-billions of dollars into breast cancer drugs or breast cancer drugs that are in development. And Genentech, which is part of Roche, also invested in a peptide immunotherapy in a collaboration as well. This slide shows our capitalization as of September 30th, 2020. We had about $6 million in cash, 12 million shares outstanding, and the ownership was about 80 to 90% held by directors and officers. And we had liabilities of about 1.6 million. On December 22nd, 2020, we raised an additional $26.4 million by issuing 660,000 shares at a price of $40 per share. So between the IPO and the follow-on offering, we have enough cash now to complete the interim analysis for the data readout of the phase three trial and to submit a BLA for conditional approval of GP2. This is our management team backed by extensive experience in the pharmaceutical and biotech industry, as well as Wall Street. David McWilliams is our chairman. I am Snehal Patel, the CEO. Joe Dougherty is our chief medical officer and Jay Thompson is our VP clinical and regulatory. Eric Roth is the founder of Greenwich Life Sciences and he and Ken Halleck fill out the rest of our board. You can see from the logos that we have big pharma, biotech, consulting, and Wall Street experience. We believe this is the right team for the phase three trial, and we will add to the team and expand as we near commercialization. This last slide is our summary. Our goal is to reproduce our phase 2b trial in a phase three trial, where we saw no breast cancer recurrences over five years of follow-up. This phase three trial will be designed conservatively to not add additional variables. The protocol and manufacturing have been reviewed by the FDA, and we plan to start the trial in 2021. We expect an interim analysis with two to three year median look at the data, and we hope to be able to expand into other phase two trials pursuing other HER2 new breast cancers, other HLA types, and other cancers where the HER2 new protein is overexpressed. We completed our follow on offering in December following our IPO in September. We have sufficient funding to now file a BLA for GP2. I'd like to thank all of the potential patients who responded to our data, and I'd like to thank our investors for their response to our data that we published on December 9th. This concludes our presentation. Thank you very much for your interest in Greenwich Life Sciences.